let us now begin the actual course okay so the first topic is kinematics of deformation see it's a non linear so it's an advanced theory of elasticity so usual theory of elasticity mostly talk about linear elasticity this is advanced theory of elasticity and uh, we want to have a kinematics which allows large deformation of the body okay so let us first see how large deformation of a body can be mathematically represented what variables can be used to denote large deformation of a body so that is called kinematics what mathematical variables are you going to use to denote the deformation so some of you have also seen it in continuum mechanics uh, for example students who are doing continuum mechanics right now for example niranjana i think you are doing it no so what are and also rawson i guess so have you started this topic this kinematics yes sir already going on kinematics yes sir so what exactly have you learned there uh, sir uh, uh, in it uh, sir we have studied uh, that uh, how uh, after uh, some deformation how the material behave uh, uh, material derivatives uh, and all the things uh, so. okay all right so we'll have a you know we'll do it quickly but i know there are some students who have who are not in continuum mechanics so i'll try to be quick anyway so in kinematics you know we have to first think of a reference configuration of the body relative to which we are going to measure everything so it's the, it's an important concept reference configuration for example when we say that the body has stretched 1.5 times then it is 1.5 times relative to what or let us say the body has displaced by certain distance then that displacement again has to be related to some position right so that reference is the reference configuration and this so let me just draw it here so here is the reference configuration so this is a three dimensional body and this reference configuration is usually stress free but need not be you know it is usually but not always or it could be the configuration at t equal to 0 or it could be any other convenient configuration So you have a choice, you can choose it to be anything. But once chosen, it is going to remain the same. You can't choose, you can't change them once you have chosen it. So, you know, for example, think of a, a sheet of paper, which is flat. So when no load is acting on that sheet of paper, it is going to be planar, right? So planar configuration is also the stress-free configuration, which means there is no stress in the in the paper at any point in the paper. So that plane configuration could be your reference configuration. Okay. Suppose that the same sheet of paper you now crumble it. So then it is no more planar, right? It has deformed. And that becomes its natural configuration then, because when you remove your forces, it still remains crumbled. 
but such a configuration is so difficult to deal with is it? it is it has got so many bends it is quite irregular so although it is a natural configuration but it is not a nice configuration so usually we want the reference configuration which is also a nice configuration so now you can think of you know unwrapping that paper into a plane but when you unwrap it into a plane it will then become stressed if you just imagine unwrapping it don't actually unwrap it just imagine unwrapping it then since now the natural configuration is the wrapped configuration and you are imagining a unwrapped configuration then in that unwrapped configuration the play the paper will actually be stressed isn't it so therefore in this particular case if you choose the reference configuration to be still that unwrapped planar configuration then it is not stress free but it is stressed so so this is an example where the reference configuration did not be stress free okay so please ask me if you have any problem and then from this reference configuration you can then think of the current configuration or the deformed configuration okay so this is reference and this is deformed slash current configuration and then you can think of a coordinate system and any point in the reference configuration you can denote it by a position vector that is big x see it's a vector so it comes with a bar below <clears throat> all right so as you change your x you start spanning the material points of this reference configuration so x you know we also say x identifies a particle of the body in the reference configuration and then any point in the deformed configuration here that is denoted by small x okay and which is the position vector again from the origin of the coordinate system of the and this is again of the same particle big x which was in the reference configuration it has now gone to small x okay so we can actually think of a function but that function is going to be a vector function now which depends on the position vector of the particle in the reference configuration and time t so you can actually write that little x is equal to f of big x comma t so this function f is such that as you change big x it gives you the current position of that particle at big x and it's a vector function because it has to return three coordinates little x1 little x2 little x3 so if we write it in some coordinate system it's going to become x1 x2 x3 and that's equal to f1 f2 f3 
and each of them are scalar functions of all the three coordinates in the reference configuration. Have you seen this thing already, Roshan? Yes, sir. OK. <clears throat> now, what will then be the displacement? So displacement is then going to be the line in these two. And that is given by u. Isn't it? So as I told you, displacement has to be measured from some relative configuration. And that relative configuration here is the reference configuration. So u, you can now define as little f of big X comma t minus big X. Okay, I hope all of you are with me. And you see, we are sticking to vector notation. You can also think of the component form where you will have u1, u2, u3. So if, if I write this in component form, this is going to become u1, u2, u3. That's equal to f1 minus big X1, f2 minus big X2 and F3 minus big X3. Okay. So this is how we denote the positions. And this can be used to denote position of any point of the body. And how are we describing any point in the body? That is through its coordinate in the reference configuration. So this is denoting material point. So a body can be thought of as a collection of particles or material points whose coordinate is big X. So we also say it's the material coordinate. And you see, this does not change with time. Because it's not a function of time. As I told you, no, this is fixed. So you can identify a particle by its reference position or its material coordinate that is big X. So for every particle, there's a unique big X and for every big X, there's a unique particle. Okay, so there's a one-to-one -one relation between big X and a particle. All right, so that's the position vector. Now, how can we define velocity and acceleration? So velocity of a particle, for example, <clears throat> so suppose you have a particle which is following this trajectory. And any point here is given by little r from some, you know, let's say some origin O. So you are measuring the position vector, some, some point O. That's little r. So it's going to be a function of time. So what is the velocity? It is simply dr over dt. Isn't it? So rate of position vector with respect to time. That's dr by dt. Now if I ask you, what is the velocity? of a material particle x.
then what will your answer be if you know this function f which by the way is also called deformation map okay so it has got a name and that's called deformation map so i can write that here so if i know this deformation map i can prescribe the configuration of the body at any time isn't it change the time you get the position at a different time through this deformation map so now what do you think how can i write the velocity of a particle in terms of the deformation map anyone can anyone answer is pulk it there del x i upon del t del x i upon del t <coughs> what is that i over there sir i do not uh, uh, sir uh, i at particle position uh, particle ka sir position vector wo denote kar raha hai particle ka position vector denote kar raha hai component sir uh, that means uh, component mm -hmm. of उससे तो वेलोसिटी का फिर कंपोनेंट मिलेगा बट सपोज मुझे वेलोसिटी वेक्टर ही चाहिए वेलोसिटी वेक्टर ऑफ मटेरियल पार्टिकल बिग एक्स तो उसका क्या काम क्या होगा डेल एफ बाय डेल टी डेल एफ बाय डेल टी हु दिस Vinayak. Vinayak. Okay. So Vinayak says it is del f by del t. How many of you agree with this? Should it not be df by dt? So you have any thought about it? Satyan Pradap Singh, what do you think? Hello. Yeah. So it should be like uh, df by dt, like on the total length, because total. Total. Yes. Sir, we are uh, we are talking about a particle, sir, not a body. That's why uh, we use del operator. Yeah. Actually, sir. Yeah. Sir, what is body? Because we are talking of a particle. Partial derivative means uh, the position is fixed and it is varying only with respect to time, while the total derivative means like uh, position is also changing with respect to time. Which position? The uh, the mat uh, material particle. Okay. So. Uh, so uh, it it will be df by dt because uh, uh, capital x is not changing sir uh, yeah, yeah. so sir we have that capital df by capital dt material time derivative capital df okay so now you're talking about capital df by capital dt is this what you're saying okay so i think this all this you are saying because i have seen several things <laughs> but so, supposing uh, that this deformation so, function that is given to you little f of big x comma t <clears throat> where big x is denoting a material particle and i want to know the velocity of a material particle <clears throat> which is identified by big x so what should it be so uh, if df by dt so uh... hello df yeah hello sir yeah nilanjana uh it 
can be do uh, do u by do t it can be do u by do t okay u so mean this yes sir that is also what i was trying to say because u is the function that is giving us the displacement between the initial and the final positions mm -hmm. so why shouldn't it be you so it should be u and not f Okay. So that is only the uh, coordinate function, right? We need the displacement vector, so we should take dou by dou t. But but look at the formula. The velocity is dr by dt. Where is the position vector? <clears throat> right. Now this position vector can of course be from some reference point, which in this case is O. So you can also think that you are measuring the displacement point from O relative to O. So in that it's d by dt of the displacement. But otherwise, u minus f of x uh, differential of u minus f of x by dt. Okay, so we are getting so many answers. Why is that happening? Um, okay, see what we want to do. Let's have a look at that picture again. So think of this particle here, big X. And think of its trajectory. This would be trajectory, isn't it? So for its trajectory, if you want to do f, what will you say it is? This is f of what? Maybe let me do another trajectory. That will make it a bit more clearer. So think of a particle x naught. Okay. And see how it is <clears throat> with time. So it is following this path. <coughs> and if I want to write down the mathematical formula for this path. Then what way what it is? If f is known, what will it be in terms of f? Would you say it is this? So in, in big X, I replace it with big X naught. Am I right? Yes. Sir. Okay, so what will then be the velocity? Velocity, as I told you, d, it is dr by dt, the position vector with respect to time. And here f is the position vector itself, so this is little r as a function of time for x naught. So that means velocity of x naught t, which is simply dr by dt, right? dr by dt. And for this particular x naught, particle x naught, if I now try to write down this in terms of little f, you see. You see this correspondence. When you change your time, t, is x not changing here? Concentrate on this box. When you change your time t from the position vector little r, does x not change? Yes, 
what do you think is it change anyone sp no sir yeah so if i want to write this in terms of def what should i write because x not should be changed That is then del f by del t, because f is a function of both x naught and t. So I should write this as del f by del t at constant x naught. But now x naught was just denoting a position for a particle, which could be a particle here. So this means the velocity for any particle x at time t is simply <coughs> del f by del t. What do you think? Does it make sense? So, so uh, why is this not? df by dt why it is not df by dt as i told you here if you look over here the definition for velocity is it is dr by dt the total derivative of position vector with respect to time now if you look at this trajectory which is denoting the position vector this trajectory Okay, this trajectory here. Well, because you have to always look at the same particle. Okay, so therefore it should be del f by del t. So I can come back here and I say that velocity of a particle big X is simply del f by del t. At fixed x, and I make a remark, x should not be changed. Otherwise, the trajectory will change. Sir, yes. Uh, sir, can we say here uh, uh, this is a case of Langlandian description? Well, I'll come to that. Let's uh, wait. Um, so, I all agree with me now that it is perfectly fine to write d as l by del t of little f, and it should be. The first thing that should come to us should be del by del t because we have to keep the particle fixed while changing the while taking the time derivative. And the way to keep particle fixed is by keeping big X fixed. Okay. So you see, it's quite non intuitive because you guys have learned fluid mechanics that velocity should be total derivative, but here you are getting actually partial derivative. But that's because two different descriptions. Yeah. The one uh, doubt that I was saying that u is just the difference between the initial and final position of the uh, yes. initial and fi yes. final position position vectors of any particle. Yes. So why are we not doing that uh, del u by del t? Because that yeah, so let's displacement by time. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Too. So one, well, this is the fundamental relation. After this, let us try to derive what more can we see about it. The same thing could also be written as del by del t, and we know that little f is same as big X 
प्लस यू ऑफ बिग ए कॉमा टी राइट एंड नाउ आई हैव टू टेक इट्स डेरिवेटिव एट कॉन्स्टेंट एक्स सो इट हैज सर जस्ट सेकेंड सो डेल एक्स बाय डी डेल ऑफ बिग एक्स बाय डेल टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट एक्स विल बी जीरो x does not have to change so it then becomes del u by del t at constant x so this is also a perfect definition for velocity yes now you tell me sir basically jo hamara naya position vector hai wo humne o ke respect mein liya hai r s not comma t ha bas sir wohi puchna tha ओके तो बेसिकली देखो वेलोसिटी को हम लोग डेल एफ बाय डेल टी भी लिख सकते हैं या डेल यू बाय डेल टी भी लिख सकते हैं ठीक है एंड इट एंड देर इज नो मीनिंग टू दिस थिंग डी एफ बाय डी टी दिस हैज गॉट नो मीनिंग हियर ओके सर हियर पार्टिकल इज फिक्स्ड दैट इज अ जनरल केस या इट्स अ जनरल केस ऑफ कोर्स बिकॉज वेलोसिटी जब भी लेना है पार्टिकल को तो फिक्स करके ही नेगेटिव लेंगे हाउ कैन वी चेंज द पार्टिकल वाइल कंप्यूटिंग दी वेलोसिटी ऑफ ए पार्टिकल वी कैन चेंज दैट पार्टिकल इटसेल्फ ओके सर yeah okay likewise when you go for acceleration so acceleration of a particle big x comma t is then again going to be del v by del t at fixed big x okay because again acceleration is a change of velocity with respect to time of a particle while taking this time derivative you can't change the particle so therefore this big x must be fixed it's by fixing the x that you are fixing the particle and then you could also write this as <clears throat> del 2f by del t 2 Which is same as del two u by del t two. Okay, have you learned all the continuous mechanics? Niranjana, sir, yes. Actually, we have learned this, but uh, we started off with uh, do u by do t when we learned in continuous mechanics. Uh, velocity so that's why i give the answer like that okay but now you can do u by do t same as do f by do do t right ah yes sir you this is more logical actually like you started with dr by dt and then showed like how do u by dt is coming yeah okay and you see all this description as roshan was pointing out earlier this is called lagrangian description so writing down velocity acceleration in terms of reference con reference position of a particle so that is called lagrangian description okay so it's just a, you can't say why it is called lagrangian because it's just a definition whenever you are expressing variables in terms of the reference particle we call it lagrangian description and this is often used in solid mechanics often used in solid mechanics but all of you know that 
there is also this thing called fluid mechanics right and fluid mechanics See, and why do we do things in terms of reference position in solid mechanics? That's because in solid mechanics, when a body deforms, it, remem it remembers its reference configuration. So by remembering, I mean if you remove the forces, it will come back to what it was originally, isn't it? So in that sense, I say that it remembers the original configuration. I'll just add it here because the body remembers its reference configuration. But for fluid mechanics, you know, for example, you take a bucket of water, you start steering it. So particles will go anywhere, depending on how you're steering. Now you remove your hand from the bucket of water. Then you'll see that the particle remains was. It does not go back to where it was originally. Isn't it? It remains wherever it is, it's going to stay there mechanics a particle does not remember its original config and therefore there it turns out it is more convenient to express everything in terms of current position of a particle in terms of current position okay so basically what I mean to say is that in fluid mechanics, velocity will be just in terms of little x comma t. Likewise, acceleration will be expressed of little x comma t. And so this is called Eulerian description. It's just a name, Eulerian description. Can we see how acceleration and velocity are related to Eulerian description? So how A and V are related? in Eulerian description. See, in Lagrangian, it is quite simple. Acceleration is equal to del V by del T at fixed dx. But in Eulerian, it turns out it is not simple. Most of you must have seen it. Now let's try to derive that relationship in life we have learned till now. So as I told you, acceleration, so acceleration, when we say in terms of little x comma t, and little x is denoting the current position, okay? And it's also called spatial configuration. You know, current position, so big X was material, small x is spatial coordinate. So it's like, so here is the coordinate system and here is the body. So any point in the space, so any point in the space is given by a small x. And there can be, at a small x, there can be a particle of the body coining at a small x. For example, at this, if this is small x1, so at small x1, there is a particle of the body present at some time t. And at different time t, so let us say t1. And at different time t, the body could be like this. 
this is T2. Now at the same location, small x1, you now have a difficulty, isn't it? So if you fix a small x, so if I fix a small x, you will have different particles at that location. at different time isn't it because small x is the spatial coordinate i hope you are clear about this but if you fix big x which is the material coordinate then we are always looking at same particle even if time changes can you see the two difference is it clear to everyone yes sir Vinayak, is it okay okay See, it is quite, it's not a simple concept. All right, so with this in mind, can you try to derive the formula for acceleration? See, what is formula for acceleration? So we have just learned It is time derivative of velocity. You can say it is dv by dt. Keeping big X fixed, isn't it? And this turns out to be del v by del t. If v is a function of big X comma t. But in the new description, if V is a function of small x comma t, so this is Lagrangian L, but in the Eulerian, this is always going to the same, that I have to do the total time derivative of velocity, keeping big X fixed. This is the definition. But if V is written in terms of small x, then let us see what is this going to be. Okay, what do you think? So maybe can I can I write this as d by dt of v and I know v is a function of small x, but small x is then itself a function of big X, comma t. And then v is also a function of t. Do you see this? And I have to do it while keeping big X fixed. So when you keep your big X fixed, this small x is also changing. You see, small x is a function of big X and t. If you keep big X fixed, and as t changes, the small x will also change. Right? So, can I write this as del v? And you see, small x is a vector. 
So let us say I take the derivative with respect to each of the components del x i into del x i over del t. And this is done at fixed capital X. Whereas the first one is done at fixed t plus del v by del t at fixed small x. Does this make sense to you? What do you think? Is it okay? Anybody so, having any problem? How come everyone is fine with it? Sir, in this approach, uh, we are fixing big X again. So how is it different from the previous approach where we are fixing big X and studying that particular particle over different time frames? No, it is different. See, that acceleration is always obtained by fixing big X. That is a basic definition. That cannot change. What is different here is the description of velocity. Velocity is now being expressed in terms of small x not in terms of big X. That's the Eulerian description. You see this here, this velocity formula? Yes, it is in terms of small x, not big X. Okay. Yes, but otherwise, the basic definition for the is always the same, that you have to do the rate of change of velocity at fixed big X, because you can't change the particle. Okay, uh, now, sir, uh, sir, I understood the first term, but uh, can you explain how is the second term coming? The second term, okay. See, I, I had to do, do the total time derivative d by dt of v, right? I have to simply do d by dt of v, keeping big X fixed. So in this t expression, whatever is the function of time, you have to change them whatever is the function of time that has to be we have to take the derivative with respect to them so the first one is due to change in first argument due to change in first argument whereas this one is due to change in second argument is it okay yes sir. yes sir. yes sir. okay so now let us again work it out what this really is so this is del v by del x i and what is del x i by del t at fixed big x what is this quantity what do you think so you can recall that v was del f by del t at fixed big x f is same as little x so component wise then v i is little i x i by del t at fixed big x right so this thing over here is then v i And then this formula here of del V by del T. Okay. So now what is this first term over here? Any guesses? What is the first term here?
सर कन्वेक्टिव पार्ट सर कन्वेक्टिव पार्ट तो मैं समझ रहा हूँ तुम्हें पता है तुमने सुना हुआ है बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेंसर If I want see, see this is in terms of index, right? Index bhi hai or velocity ek tensor bhi hai. Can we write it completely in terms of tensor? So that's my question. Divergence of v. Divergence of v. And well, that is so we can write this as this is vi, vi comma vi in terms of the notation we did in the previous class, comma notation. Okay, okay let us see. So what you are saying is this thing over here. We can write this v comma this. Yes. You're saying this is v i into v j comma i, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what you just said is this a scalar or a vector? Yes, sir, it's a vector. How is it a vector? It's my v i is a scalar. V j comma i is also a scalar. And product of scalars is a scalar. Gradient of, of, yeah. of a scalar is a vector. But you are you are vj comma i is simply the scalar derivative of a scalar function vj. Scalar derivative of yes, vj yes, is also scalar. Yes. So obviously this is not correct. So these two are not correct because the thing in the black circle is a vector. So any idea how can it in tensor notation? Sir, will it be grad of v into vi? Yeah, yeah. Say again. Sir, grad of v into vi. Grad of v vi. Grad of v vector vi. Yeah. Okay. Let us see. Is that correct? So he's saying grad of v into vi, is it? No, sir. It should be grad of scalar valued function v, vi. Okay, no, sir. Uh, okay, I'm following what you said. You said this right? Grad grad of v into vi. But this is all correct because grad of v is a second order tensor. Yes. Multiply with a scalar, it becomes a second. Order. But what we have here within the box is a vector. Yes. What do you think now? Any? Let's make guesses. Uh, sir, it can be written as uh, v dot uh, del, v dot del, in, and then uh, it is operated on a uh, vector v. V dot v dot del, and then it is operated on vector v. Then v dot del, and then. Not uh, not this one. Like uh, the operator function should be v dot del, and then it is operating on v vector. Okay, you are saying it is v dot del, and then it is acting on v. Yeah. What is the meaning of v dot del? I'm looking at del dot. L dot V जो है divergence होता है, V dot del sir I don't know any specific name to it but uh, this is a valid operation like V dot del it's a valid operation
Let us try to this in terms of what we have learned. Okay. So see what we have is del v over del x i into v i. Maybe let us see. Can we write this as del v over del x i tensor product e i into v? Can we write this? Because we know that by definition, if you have a second order tensor multiplied with a vector, then you have to dot these two. Then it becomes del v over del x i into v i and this is what it is originally right so what we wrote in the middle is correct but the thing inside the bracket here isn't that the definition of gradient of velocity so that's gradient of velocity multiplied by v a second order tensor which is gradient of v acting on v so that's what it is okay so we can go back and write this as gradient of v into v plus del v by del t so that's the formula for acceleration and what is the meaning of these two terms and that's something Rawson was saying so as you know that this part is time derivative at fixed small x that means you are fixing the position so in the space you are at a particle at a particular point small x you are not fixing the particle you are fixing the spatial position or whose position per the way velocity is changing so it's like you have a fluid moving in motion and you keep a probe fixed at a position and whatever that probe is measuring the velocity the rate of change of that velocity that is this acceleration so this is also called local acceleration in fluid mechanics because it is at a fixed spatial location at a fixed spatial location whereas this part you see why it came it is due to change in velocity how velocity is changing at that point small x and therefore it is also called convective acceleration and this arose because we are looking at the velocity of a particle which at a time t is at location small x but while measuring the acceleration of that particle as the time changes the particle will move to a different point in space. So due to change in position of the particle from a small x to its nearby position, the velocity is also changing because velocity is a function of a small x. As the particle changes its position, the velocity also changes in the Eulerian description. And so, because of the movement of the particle, the velocity has changed. And therefore, this is called convection because convection means movement, motion of the particle. So, because of the motion of the particle, this term arose. Okay. I hope that this is clear to you. Physical meaning of convective and local acceleration.
you know you could have also derived that using fundamental theorem of calculus are you guys there yes sir yes sir okay, okay thank you thank you I, it was both silent and i thought is everyone gone what's the network problem so anyway so acceleration yeah. as a function of little x comma t as i told you this is dv by dt right at fixed big x not fixed little x so the time derivative using fundamental theorem of calculus to be v of little x at at fixed big x comma t plus delta t comma t plus delta t minus v at little x at big x comma t comma t divided by delta t and then you take the limit delta t going to zero can you see this you have to change jahan bhi time argument hai usko t se t plus delta t kar dena hai this is the basic derivative formula fundamental theorem of calculus right sir as called out sir yes sir uh, this expression that you also wrote previously the uh, velocity is depending on a small x uh, which is the point we are fixing in space at the random point and how is that uh, yes. uh, again depending on capital x and t that is what i want to understand yeah very good question that's a really good question see this uh, little x is a point in space we are not fixing it what we are fixing is the particle right because we have to look at a particle as it moves in the space yes. it just turns out that the point where we are measuring the acceleration that little x the particle happens to be at that same particular position little x okay. at that instant at a later time it will be at a different location the previous time it will be at some other location now because we are we are looking at a given particle so big x is fixed and therefore a small x will change right because as the particle the space the position in space of the particle will also change therefore little x is changing Okay. So you know this, for example, this is not dv by dt at small x. This is not correct it's because acceleration by definition is dv at big x. This thing only gives you local acceleration. Okay, now coming back to this fundamental theorem of calculus. So, how do I write this now? So, in this thing, maybe we can write this as v of little x plus delta little x, isn't it? Because the argument has changed, so x must have gone to delta little x, comma t plus delta t. Minus v of little x comma t divided by delta t. So now you can do Taylor's expansion of this first thing here, and both the arguments are changing. So dono me karna padega. So this is going to become del v over del little x r t. into delta little x i 
वेल दैट्स अ डेरिवेटिव पार्ट इसमें कांस्टेंट पार्ट जो है सिंपली v एट x comma t so i should have written that earlier so let me do this correctly so this is v at little x comma t plus del v over del little x i into del little x i plus del v over t into delta t minus v of little x comma t divided by delta t take the limit delta t going to zero and you can see these two cancel and then here you have del v over del little x i limit delta t going to zero okay and then everything works out then so this is same as del v over del x i into limit delta t going to zero you are doing it so slowly step by step delta x i over delta t plus del v by del t and now this this is same as vi correct because delta xi is change in spatial position of the particle the ith coordinate and if you divide it by delta t you get the velocity of the particle the ith coordinate velocity of the particle okay so you we got what earlier this is del v over del little x i into v i plus del v by del t which is gradient of v multiplied by v plus del v by del and you can see it now more clearly that indeed the first term him because of change in the position spatial position of the delta little x and therefore it is called convective acceleration so you want confuse between lagrangian and eulerian right in lagrangian the velocity and acceleration formula were so simple but in eulerian it gets complicated I guess you must have done this in your continuum mechanics, Niranjana. Had you done it? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. He, we didn't do the proof, but he gave the formula and uh, uh, told about this. So we talked about position vector, velocity, and acceleration, and how they are written in Lagrangian and Eulerian. Okay. The next thing to do is. to measure the deformation of the body so here we just talked about the motion of the body so now we are going to talk about deformation of a body all right so again we have the reference configuration and getting mapped to deformed configuration okay this is reference and this is deformed and any point here goes to a point over here little x and originally it is at big x okay now how can we measure the deformation of the body what all should we do to measure the deformation of a body what do you think what can you say about it uh, so uh, we can uh, take a line line element uh, in uh, reference configuration and uh, we see the 
uh, in the form configuration sir uh, we measure the uh, we measure the same line element and uh, calculate the deformation after that okay yeah that is uh, certainly what one has to do but even basic before that how can we characterize deformation So, whenever deformation happens, body will change its shape. It can also change its, its size, right? So, you must have learned in your basic uh, solid mechanics course that uh, when the body forms, it develops what is called a strain in it, isn't it? Of course, stress develops, and then strain also develops due to change in shape and size body. And strain can vary from point to point in the body. Now, even at a point, you can have longitudinal strain, you can have shear strain, you can have volumetric strain. So you have local strains. Strains are not global. There is not one unique strain value for the entire body. Strain changes from point to point, right? And through strain, you can know whether the deformation is severe or severe. If a strain is very small, then deformation is small. If strain is large, then deformation is large. Right? So basically, you can measure deformation through a strain. And there are different kinds of strains, longitudinal, then shear, and volumetric. Okay, longitudinal is used to measure the change in length, but the original length, shear. We talk of shear when we are looking at the change in angle between two lines. And volumetric means when we look at the change in volume, local change in volume, isn't it? We'll make them quite clear as we go ahead, but this is what it is. So, so we would like to have somehow a formula for these strains, longitudinal, shear, and volumetric strain, when the body undergoes large deformation. See, in your undergraduate, sorry, and scores you must have gotten the formula for longitudinal strain for example this you may have seen to be del u by del x can you recall the shear strain for example was del u by del x 2 plus del u 2 by del x 1 so this is gamma 1 2 there is also gamma 2 3 gamma 1 3 and then the volume strain was del u 1 by del x 1 plus del u2 by del x2 plus del u3 by del x3. Can you recall these formulas? I think, uh, had you already done these things in your uh, continuum mechanics or uh, you are yet to do it? Roshan, have you done it? Yes, sir. Uh, he not recap the all the things. Uh, he start uh, from deformation gradient tensor. So, uh, sir. Uh, so, what are you guys doing? Yes, sir. Doing right now. Sir, I am unable to hear you, sir. Mechanics. What are you guys doing in continuum mechanics right now? Uh. Abhi, sir, uh, wo, uh, material derivative uh, uh, topic chal raha hai, sir, or uh, uh, usme, sir, uh, uh, deformation gradient tensor that means stretch, uh, uh, stretch, and uh, uh, further, sir, uh, right quasi green tensor, ye sab, sir, bata rahe hain. Achha, achha, okay. So, you are a bit ahead from what, where I am right now, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so yes, to get longitudinal strains, here is volumetric strain. 
so our goal here is to get some formula for these strains which will be work which will work even for large deformation you see these formula that i have written here they are only for small deformation they are not for large deformation so here we want to find out formulas for them for large deformation now you see at a point x in the body big x you can have several line elements engraved in the body you see what is the meaning of line elements you draw a line in the body and the particles material particles which lie on those line they form material line elements and as body deforms these line elements will also deform okay so therefore they are called material line elements and if you want to know longitudinal strain at a point big x then you have to look at the strain the change in length over length of these line elements and you see there are so many line elements at a point so for each of the line elements you will have a unique longitudinal strain so you see it's quite complicated the longitudinal strain is not only changing from point to point in the body but even at a point in the body you have different values of longitudinal strain for different line elements likewise you can think of shear strain for shear strain you take of you think of two perpendicular line elements and measure the change in angle so even at a point you can have several pairs of perpendicular line elements it's not a single perpendicular line element there are so many pairs of perpendicular line elements and when you measure the change in angle for each of those perpendicular line elements then you get shear strain corresponding to those two perpendicular line elements okay so basically you see you have to work with line elements at a point so you have to know how the line element changes its length how the line element is changing its orientation so you want to know the relationship between the relationship of element in the current and reference configuration if you know what happens to a line element in the current or deformed configuration then you would be able to find out how much is the stretch of that line element isn't it if you know what happens to two line elements which were originally perpendicular suppose there is this line element here perpendicular but after deformation the angle has changed to some beta so the angle it has changed from 90 to beta so the shear strain is then 90 minus beta the change in angle right so basically we have to know the final deformed line element for a given original line element how does it look like in the deformed line deformed configuration so that is the question now if you can find that then you can get all these strains so the question is how is a line element reference configuration transform in the deformed configuration if you can know the transformation of line elements then you can find out all these strains longitudinal strains shear strain volumetric strain you will find all of them okay so this be what we will learn in the next class